Hi, I'm Dr. Cher, and I'm uh, going to talk to you this whole month, the month of February, which is the month of Valentine's Day. So we're going to talk about self-love, self-love, which falls into the realm of self-worth, self-care, all these areas. Um, you know, I've been working with women a long time in the area of weight loss, and there are definitely certain patterns that I've seen over the years. So ask yourself, what do you think comes first? It's a bit like the, what comes first, chicken or the egg? What comes first? Losing weight contributes to then a higher sense of self-worth and self-love? Or is it the other way around? That having a sense of self-worth and self-love and wanting to be more, take care of yourself, that that then feeds and leads to a successful weight loss journey. When I talk about weight loss journey, I'm also not just talking about losing weight. I'm also talking about keeping it off. That's getting into the long-term lifestyle. So what do you think is, which way do you, does it go? Is it feeling better, self-love first, then losing weight? Or is it losing weight and then the self-love and the confidence? So I would say in all my years and working with women over the years, that having a sense of self-love and self-worth is ultimately what helps to lose the weight. It's not the other way around. Now, they do feed off each other. It does go a little back and forth over the course of the journey, but there does need to be some sense of self-worth in order to do what you need to do to hold the course, to lose the weight, and to develop the lifestyle habits to keep it off. So often, what happens is I'll see where the patterns that I see most commonly are a lot of times what's led to somebody gaining weight is they often have put the needs and, and obligations they have in their life and the needs of other people, the needs of all the other things they have going on, all of that comes first and they're last. And as a result of this, you know, often they're overwhelmed, <laughs> they're highly stressed, which affects their metabolism, which then can feed the desire to turn to certain comfort foods or convenient foods. Um, they don't have time. So again, the time to kind of think about the mental capacity to think about their food, to plan, to make sure they have the food, to prep the food, even if it's not hugely time consuming, but the feeling is it's overwhelming. That's one more thing to do. Um, also just the bandwidth in their, in their life, just to have that, the focus, right? Just to remember, oh, I've got to get, certain groceries. Oh, I have to remember to make my lunch or take it with me if they're working outside of the home. Um, and just prioritizing what they need to do in terms of so they can hold the course to lose weight. Um, and then, you know, and also down the road, keep it off, which it doesn't take as much mental capacity in terms of keeping it off, but still they need to be able to prioritize um, their, their lifestyle habits and things that will help them maintain a healthy life and, and, and manage their weight well. So these are the things. So the, that's the, often the pattern that I see. And in order to lose the weight, we gotta break that pattern. Because if, if they continue to always cater to everybody else in their life, put everything else first, the odds are they're not gonna shift that pattern. It's gonna be very hard for them then to hold the course and lose the weight. So in order to change the patterns, that's what I mean. This is where having that sense of self-confidence, self-love, self-worth is what will help them make some of these changes. Because typically how this will look, the changes that they need to make often could be things around, can they, you know, will they block some time for lunch if they're working outside of the home? Um, will they make a choice in restaurants if they are going out to a restaurant? I mean, I know that example is not as particularly relevant currently, but eventually it will be. Um, if ordering in, can they, will they say, oh, you know what, let's not order from there because I know I really can't get anything on the menu that will work for me, but can we order from here? Um, can we block my schedule so I actually do get a bit of time for my lunch as opposed to skipping my lunch and then snacking in the afternoon? So these are just a few little examples 
that are often will trip people up and as a result they're not able to to to, to continue on their, their weight loss journey the way they would like to because these other things interfere with them sticking with their plan and this is where the, the self-worth because with the, in the sense of self-worth means basically in self-love is this whole idea of, you know, I matter, my priorities matter, my goals matter, um, my opinions matter, all these things. There is a sense of self-worth when somebody shows up in their life and says, these things matter to me and therefore I'm going to be making requests or I'm going to be blocking my schedule or I'm going to have to maybe set some boundaries. Um, all these types of things so that then they can follow through on what they want to do. And that's what I mean. That's what is necessary um, to varying degrees in each person's life in order that they can follow through. So when people, when I'm coaching people on this, uh, if it comes up over the course of while well, I'm working with them where they're, you know, suddenly they're getting tripped up with it because of these scenarios where they haven't been able to prioritize it. Um, and these old patterns are repeating themselves. I often find it comes falls into a couple of areas. One is either they've just never done it differently. So they don't really have a problem asking for what they need. It's just they've never done it. So it's a question of me as at saying, well, I had one uh, an example this past week with a client who wasn't really taking time for her lunch. And I said, okay, is it really like you're really, I know you're booked, but are you able to have your assistant block a bit of time? Like, is that possible? Or are these meetings you have no control over your schedule at all? And she says, well, actually, no, I do. And yes, actually, it is possible. She's just never done it. She's just made herself available. And whenever people book meetings, she goes. So that's an example. So she was able to kind of take charge going, okay, I'm actually going to do this. She started doing it. So guess what? Now she's trying to eat her lunch relatively simple solution but just it was so not part of her pattern she'd never thought to to ask for it um and she wasn't nervous about it she wasn't worried about it, it wasn't a confidence thing she just hadn't thought to do it but the other one is where people they have the, the they they might actually feel really uncomfortable asking for what they need and again it can be a case of just they've never done it but at the same time they're, they don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable or they don't want to inconvenience others. So it's, and they've just, they feel really uncomfortable kind of stepping up and saying, you know what, I'd rather order from this restaurant or, you know, can we block this time? I need some time for my lunch. Um, so, you know, with those people, obviously that's where the coaching comes in handy because having me sort of, you know, gently give them a nice little jump, you know, push to say, you can do this. And nine times out of 10, it's a non-issue. It's just, they, they just are not used to sort of stating their needs in their life, and therefore it's a very uncomfortable feeling initially. But that's often what it takes. So this, if you think of it as uh, just self-love, it's just, hey, I'm important. What I want is important. I care about, about myself enough, then I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna show up and just, you know, in a nice way, but just say kind of what I need in terms, so I can, in terms of support, and whatnot so that I can kind of carry on this journey because it's like really important to me. That is a form of self-love. Uh, it's a form of self-care. So that's, um, I just wanted to mention that to you, you know, during the beginning of this month, month of February, month of love and self-love. And over the next weeks, I'm going to be bringing some other stuff. I mean, some, um, we'll be doing one on like pleasure because food is pleasurable, but like, can we bring other forms? The more we kind of have more joy and pleasure in our life from other areas, we're not necessarily turning to food as our only source of pleasure. Um, I'll be talking about setting boundaries. How can you go about that? I'm also going to talk about how you develop more of a loving self-talk. Listen to yourself. Is it kind of a critical self-voice, a judgy, judgy self-voice, or can, how do you change it? So it's said with compassion and self-love. Um, and so these are some things we're going to talk about this week because you know, the whole essence of everything I do, it is about people sort of valuing themselves, what's important to them, and following through on what's important to them. And, and that takes courage, but it takes self-love and self-respect. So I'm very excited about the topic for this month. Anyway, so follow, keep following, and there'll be more to come over the next few weeks. In the, in the meantime, in the next week, you know, give yourself a big hug. See how you can bring some joy, some love into your life. 
Notice how you talk to yourself, because these things will become more relevant as I speak over the, over the next few weeks. Um, and think about this, you know, how are you feeling about yourself? Do you have a sense of self-worth and self-love? And what do you need to do to maybe raise that in your life so that you can move forward and make the choices and state your needs so that you can be successful in your weight loss journey? Okay, so have a great week and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.